We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bu bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. Nice. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. What are you doing? I'm so sorry for the interruption, it's just... Just... Let me show you. L let me show you. Come here. Come here. Oh, come here. Say hi to the people. So, this little thing... Hmm? Her name is Yuki, and Yuki means snow in Japanese, if I'm correct. And I wanted something that um, had something to do with Christmas and winter, because I got her on the 20 24th of December. So she's not here very long, and she's not that old, actually. She's just so curious. She's still so curious. She wants to know everything. She wants to find out everything. So right now I'm just hoping that she will stay on my lap, but she's already looking at the cord of my headphones, which she really likes to eat. And now she's licking my arm. Okay, so anyway, sorry for the interruption, she just made a weird sound and I still need to watch her and everything. Okay, bye. Goodbye. So I'm sorry if I sometimes seem a little distracted. This little thing right here is the reason why. Anyway, <clears throat> Malix, that was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. Don't. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Malik's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Okay. Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and... Come here, you silly thing. Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. She's now on my desk. What's, what, what's the right decision? What's the right thing to do? Let's leave them alone and stop licking the candle. That's not good for you, little girl. Oh yeah, I know. I know you're curious about everything. Just sit down for a second, girl. Malik stared wide-eyed at my words. I could feel the boys do the same from behind me. Malik then smirked and leaned in nose to nose with me. Just who the fuck are you? Just who the fuck are you? That's none of your concern. Don't get on my keyboard like the last time. I actually already tried to record uh, a Seasons of the Fall video for you guys this uh, Tuesday. It's just that Yuki wouldn't let me because all she did was run over my keyboard and attack the screen because she saw that white little fox. So I didn't have anything to show you guys and I'm really sorry about that. Anyway. That's none of your concern. You got a big mouth, nameless bitch. You best be careful who you speak to. Oh, shoot.
No, I was too late. What just happened? That was timed? Don't bite that. Stop it. All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back, forcing me to cry out and stare up at Malik's. His eyes bored into mine as he cackled in my face. Hey! Let her go! Sam! Eric! Within mer mere seconds, Sam had punched Malik square in the jaw, forcing him to let my hair go. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik and back in their group. <laughs> Come on, Sam! You and me! Right here! Let's go! Oh my god, he makes really creepy sounds. Come on, asswipe! However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malik's shoulder. That's enough, Malix. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? I stared as the girl spoke down at Malik's. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malix. Or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. Then... We shoot everyone! Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. <laughs> Okay. The two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from under their teeth. Malix grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> God, where did she go? Unbelievable. Anyway, then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my I eyes. I don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> okay, that is one creepy evil laugh. With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Yeah. Why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I'm hearing her meow, but I'm not seeing her. You see, she's only like 15 weeks old, so she does this thing where she tries to make a sound, but she cannot do it yet because she's too young, so she, there's no sound coming. It's just that I know she's meowing. Where are you, girl? Where are you? Yuki! Oh well. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malix had left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know. It's hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. Okay. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed and I happened to land in the middle of it? 
What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. Hey, stop eating the court. Don't. She always tries to eat, like, electrical cords, which is obviously way too dangerous to actually do. So don't do it. Don't do that. No, don't. Just, just don't. Anyway. But what about going outside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Okay, that sounds... Okay, I... Guess? Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Yeah, knew. Well, yeah. Oh my god, I actually want to uh, start like this Aikido class because uh, a colleague of mine, we were talking about some books and some um, hobbies of ours and I was like, oh yeah, I have a katana here and I don't really know how to use it but it's still epic to have. And then he was like, oh, you should do Aikido because if you do that, you actually have moves that look like sword fighting and it can actually help you learn how to use a katana it's really weird uh that a sport like that can help me with something like that but i'm like you know what why not so i'm gonna check out where i can actually do that in i don't know around here because i think it'd be pretty cool to do anyway sorry I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malix. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the Incubi, I felt like a target to something I'd never be able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this all happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? <sighs> they are only staying until after they defeat Malix. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. After, after that, my life could go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kay would say. The question was then, would I want them to leave? If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. She found a box. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. What? Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. Oh. Say what now? 
I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m.? Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh had escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Mm, what should we do? Work on homework and uh, explore the house. Ah, let's go make some coffee. I decided making coffee was my best bet in surviving the rest of the day. Why not? haven't had coffee in forever. I got out of bed and made my way to the kitchen, unconcerned, unconcerned that I was in my pajama pants and a tank top. Can you leave your thing alone, please? I rummaged through the cabinets for a coffee machine and any makings for coffee. Surely my grandfather had some. A French press? Well, it's better than nothing. As I began to make my coffee, I checked my email and texts on my phone. No new important emails, no text messages. <sighs> I quickly made my coffee just how I liked it and sat on the counter. But then, I began to wonder, would this happen every day? I let the question linger in my mind. For a whole morning, I did not think once about the boys or Maliks. Everything was peaceful. Everything was average. Nothing magical or dangerous or unusual. Hmm. I simply drank my coffee as I let the thought marinate in the back of my mind. I returned to bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag me under my covers to try sleeping again. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday and nothing was happening today. Come on, eyes. Back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I had slept for much longer. Why is time going so slowly? <sighs> I sighed, got changed into normal clothes and went out to the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very, very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all five of the boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle with the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each, each almost masterfully. Uh, let's... let's not disturb them. I just watched. The boys were very much in their own world, focusing on the training they all were in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head into the kitchen. I was getting hungry and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. Might as well make lunch today. <laughs> it's been a while since I cooked. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make... Well, I do love me some chicken and rice. I actually made that the other day, but it wasn't like simple chicken and rice. It was chicken and rice in ketchup sauce with red peppers. And it was actually pretty spicy and nice. And I really like to make that sort of thing. But uh, let's not make that for lunch. Uh, let's just go with cold cut sandwiches. Or pizza. Pizza is nice as well. I just had pizza like an hour ago, I think. Oh, I just love pizza. Okay, I'm gonna go with pizza. Pizza is always good no matter what time of the day it is. Do we have any? Luckily, we had some pizza in the freezer to heat up. Pizza Moore's baked with love pizza had all the makings of pizza types, including pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms and extra cheese. Just top it, bake it and serve. I'd have to get more later. I placed the food in the dining room. However, 
None of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. Let's find one of the incubi! I quickly rushed back and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down one of the boys. I looked down each hall, trying to find one of the incubi, wondering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? I sighed, knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. I quickly turned and headed back to the dining room one last time. When I arrived, I gasped. 